Hello, folks. My name is Max. Uh, today, I'm not your host of the most, but the, the host of the least. I had a horrible, horrible night of sleep. And normally, that does not bode well for my uh, foreign languages and my general coherency. But uh, the mood is good, and uh, we're going to try anyway. And um, with me, of course, is Liz Cross, Psychopedium and Earth Ambassador to the Galactic Federation. <laughs> that, that is a sweet gig, Liz. I mean, I, I don't know, you're a very well-networked lady. And uh, <laughs> how, what are the benefits involved in that? Is that like uh, vouchers for, for space travel for you and the kids? Or uh, <laughs> that must be a sweet gig. <laughs> You're so funny. That's so funny. And well, if only I could find the Galactic Federation. I get asked that a lot. And we've done a lot of videos lately where I've been channeling aliens. And we actually had uh, an alien that was specifically catered to our group that came down to speak to us. But uh, yeah, no, I cannot find the Galactic Federation as of yet. Uh, I, I know you have. I, I know you. You have to say this to not blow your cover, and I, I respect that. <laughs> so, uh, so okay, you don't know. You you can't find the Galactic Federation. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm part of this. <laughs> part of the secret space program. <laughs> All right, so uh, folks, um, today we have uh, an interesting. I think an interesting topic. Um, it was posed by me. This uh, submitted by me. Um, the other day, I saw a very interesting little video on, the, I think it was a history channel program. Uh, some of you might remember uh, this big meteor, um, um, uh, which um, uh, impacted near a city in Russia, Chelyabinsk. Uh, this happened in 2013, in uh, February. And um, the images uh, of this huge uh, flash of light and the comet breaking up, the meteor breaking up and uh, window shattering. They, the, these images went around the world, and um, uh, NASA and the the, uh, the Russian space agency they didn't see this this meteor uh, coming at all. And it was a major uh, major international uh, news event. Um, and then the other day, so two weeks ago, I suddenly saw this video whereby a UFO, what appeared to be a Tic Tac type UFO, flew through the meteor and made it break up, thereby preventing it from uh, creating uh, significant damage or, or killing people. And that in turn um, triggered something where I, I sometimes feel a lot of people, you know, they feel the powers that be are ganging up on us to, to sub subjugate us, to destroy humanity. But I personally always feel there are also powers that protect us. Um, logically speaking, humanity should have destroyed itself 20 times over by now uh, with nukes uh, uh, or any other creepy technologies that uh, we have. Nevertheless, um, we are still here and the sky is still blue and most of us most of us are still uh, living uh, more or less a free life so uh you know i thought that would make for an interesting video so we're going to take that ufo uh, intervention as a starting point and see where it leads us uh maybe it won't lead us anywhere but we'll see so, um, before I get accused again of talking too much, uh, let's uh, switch to Liz. And um, so, Liz, um, could you hone in on, on that, um, that meteor impact uh, nine years ago in February in central Russia over the city of Chelyabinsk? Yes, yes, I, I have it here. I've got the city grouped as an entity and the meteor which obviously is no longer in existence, but it still has a consciousness. I have that as well. 
Okay, I think the meteor, most of it rests on the bottom of a, a lake uh, not too far from Chelyabins. Okay. Can you confirm that? Yes, that's true. So um, can you confirm that uh, the, the meteor, in fact, was um, obliterated by uh, another life form, another entity? Yes. I'm surprised yeah. by that answer. I was, you know, you just never know what you're going to get. But yes. It was hit by something else. Okay. Well, the, the, the footage was very convincing. And, and, and sorry, folks, I looked for it on YouTube. I was planning to post it uh, as a link under the video. But unfortunately, it's, it's not out there on um, the tube. And uh, my apologies for that. Um, but uh, so use your imagination of a Tic Tac uh, flying basically straight through the comet and uh, it, it flying into it. Uh, being obliterated into hundreds of different pieces. It, it's, it's really amazing footage. Uh, and experts have looked at it and it didn't look uh, manufactured at all. So Liz, does it make sense maybe to, to focus on the, the entity, the consciousness, the UFO that, uh, that affected the, the meteor? What, what was it that affected the meteor? I, it's hard to describe what it is. Was it? A, it seems like it was a UFO. It for the human eye, it looked like a typical, uh, like a, a white cylindrical object. Uh, so not really a tic tac, but because it, it, the the, uh, the ends of it were kind of it, it was more cylinder, but it was white. And um, yeah, I don't know how, how how could you what kind of method could you use to 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 identify what it is? Let's see what what is this? Well, the meteor doesn't actually know. So let me go straight to the object. Okay, yeah. so let's go. That's this is a good one. I like this. This is going to be a good one today. Um, so let's see what is this object. We were sent from space. Okay, so I have the object here. Are you owned by UFOs? Are you owned by aliens? Yes. Well, first, what is the object? What was it? What is the object? Was it a craft? It, it, was it a craft? No, it's like an energy, but it was it contained in a... Uh, a cylinder like was it so okay but why were we able to see this because it was so energy so they sent some sort of like energy beam that's the best way I can describe it okay you know how people see orbs and mm -hmm. things like that and I've talked about orbs before and just for those, because I get a lot of questions when I talk about orbs and a lot of emails and a lot of comments and a lot of people don't know what orbs are. So orbs are like those energy balls that we see sometimes, right? Now, what you want to see are like the bright colored ones, white, like a pink, light blue, green, those white light sort of colors. I've also seen black orbs. You need to stay away from black orbs. That's like dark energy. Okay. So orbs are energy, but because aliens have the power of telepathy, right? They can actually con co consciously and collectively, they can focus energy and make it extremely concentrated. And they, that's what they did. They made like this cylindrical, they made it into a sphere. Now, I know this sounds really bizarre because I can see the look on your face, Bax, and I'm sorry. No, I mean, we, we are, we're all about the uh, obscure and the bizarre here in this uh, podcast, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, but for, pe for people like me, okay, because, you know, I am a psychic medium, 
I can actually see energy and I can work energy and I can move energy. And actually I can pull energy out of you. So, so I understand what they're saying here, which is they, they, they collectively made this energy type cylindrical thing and they shot it at this meteor. You're, you're looking at, <laughs> so let me give you another example. No, no, I, 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 I'm just highly entertained. I mean, I'm oh. not laughing at you or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you are. But because, you know, this actually happened to me and I, I've talked about New Orleans and I think everybody should go to New Orleans, right? I do. Uh, just not to drink, uh, not for the gumbo, right? Because I'm not a fan of gumbo, but the psychic warfare down there is amazing. you got this street corner uh, full of psychic mediums and another street corner full of psychic mediums and they all hate one another, right? And so they're all having like these psychic wars during the day. And then... Of course, you've heard me talk about that store Hex in uh, New Orleans and the, the, the Black Magic and all that stuff. After I had another encounter with that store Hex, on my way home, I was driving and I was on the interstate or motorway and I was doing 55. No, I was doing more than that. I was doing 65 miles per hour. And I saw this huge black orb object, right? come at me from the other side of the interstate. My friend was in the vehicle. And now you have to understand we're, we're going forward at 65 miles per hour. I was probably speeding just a little bit, probably a little bit more than 65. And this thing came at me sideways and it, it came across the road and through my vehicle and out the other side. <clears throat> and it was huge. It was a black energy ball. And my friend also saw it. And it actually gave her a, a very sharp head pain. And she goes, Oh, God, what what was that? My, my head, my head. And she saw it as well. So that's how calculating energy can be moved around. So if you think about the physics in that alone, that's quite amazing. I'm going 65. This thing's coming at speed right across the interstate and through my window. It didn't do any damage to the car because of course energy orbs can go through walls, they can go through whatever. But that's exactly what happened with this meteorite, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, which is the, they, they formed a cylindrical type of energetic uh, weapon, okay? And it, it interfered. So let's tie up a loose end and go back to the meteor, uh, the meteorite itself. So if it wouldn't have been destroyed the way it was or broken up in pieces, what kind of damage would it have done? It's kind of obvious that it would have been bad. And but like, what was there? Uh, can you maybe ask the meteor what would have happened if uh, it it wouldn't have been um, interrupted in its trajectory the way it was? It would have consumed a very large area. Now, when I say consumed, Ooh. it's showing me that actually the ground would have sunken in. Like so, so the, the city or a large area would have just been swallowed up whole. Now, that's interesting to me. Gosh, I really like this today. The reason I find this interesting is because I have done many, many, many CTT sessions, right? Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, probably over a thousand going hundreds of sessions, right? And I've actually only ever come across two lifetimes where the person who was receiving the session at the time was a dinosaur in a previous life. And one of the traumas that we came across as this person was a dinosaur was this, in fact, this thing where you could see all this stuff falling from the sky. I didn't even know what it was when I was doing the CTT session. I was like, okay, you're a dinosaur and you're running. Everybody's running for their lives. 
and nobody knows how to get out of the area because again because we're all so souls in a body right so so all these souls were running and in, in dinosaur bodies and that was exactly what was coming in or down to the earth's surface and it was setting the earth on fire. And it was the same thing, the same scenario, which was just like this ground just, you know, swallowing up all of the life forms on the on there. And like swallowed by fire or by water or by uh, like hot air or what, what 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 would have caused the actual death of the people uh, nearby and animals? So it's it's hard to explain if you ever see like some of those crazy movies, I guess they're not so crazy, but where, you know, something's rushing towards earth and then it puts like this massive like hole. It creates like this vacuum. A vacuum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a pressure and, wave. Yeah. So pre there you go. A pressure wave. Right. I was like, I'm trying to describe what this is and I couldn't figure it out. Thank you. Like a pressure wave. Right. And it mm -hmm. just, Boom. And, and when it hits, it, it actually hits the earth so hard that the earth just falls in. Right. Uh, the, yes. The, the, the meteor, was it uh, was it just um, did it end up uh, on earth in a natural way or was it perhaps uh, sent by someone? Ooh. Ooh, yeah. That question came to me uh, spontaneously. So. Yeah, that's a good question. And this is the thing with these probes, right? We you we all have to think on our feet here. Uh, did you were you spontaneous? No, it was pre-planned. What do you mean pre-planned? Pre-planned by the universe? Yes, pre-planned by the universe. So everything is by design. Why then did these these um, these beings interrupt your your existence that was supposed to happen as well again okay again this is just another way of us becoming more familiar with life forms that are not on earth so okay so the 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 the, the universe sent uh the meteorite our way but the universe also wanted it to be destroyed in time so is then the meaning that uh, the, the bigger meaning that we actually discovered what was going on, that uh, now the footage of this uh, energy weapon uh, destroying the meteorite is coming out and that we're becoming aware of the fact that uh, in this case that we are, are protected by uh, something or someone uh, bigger than us. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, that's good news. Uh, and let's now focus, <laughs> let's focus on, <laughs> we need good news in this day and age. Um, let's focus on uh, the uh, consciousness, uh, the beings, the persons that, uh, that sent the, uh, the, the energy uh, our way or the meteorites way. Um, can you hone in on them and what can you tell us about them or it? The energy that sent the meteorites way? Yeah, who's protecting us? Who's protecting us? Hmm. This is some sort of being that exists or beings that exist in, in uh, outer space. It's a, there's, you know, okay, let, before we, before we get too far in. Just because something is not in a living, breathing body does not mean that there's no consciousness, okay? There's consciousness everywhere, and there's consciousness in space, right? Black holes have consciousness, vacuums have consciousness, planets have consciousness. Um, whatever this is, it's like a collective consciousness that exists in energy form in space. Clear as mud. 
No, I, 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 I understand it. And I, I think most of our audience will as well. People that are, you know, curious about the topic of consciousness. So this is, and what can you tell us more about this consciousness? Is this a consciousness that is obviously or seemingly benign to us? Does it just, is it around us here? Uh, is it just doing its own thing or is it uh, the meaning of its life also to protect us from uh, the worst things? It likes to protect us. It does. And it's and extremely powerful. Is it somehow, uh, what, what role does it play in the, in the creation of this planet? Like, what, uh, is it something, is it the consciousness that was created uh, at the same time uh, as this planet? Or is it maybe an evolved human consciousness? Or what, what can you tell us about its origin? That is also excellent. Uh, that's why I love my interviewers, right? I love you guys. You guys know how to think on your feet and you know how to ask questions. You cannot okay. prepare for stuff like this. Um, so was this a consciousness that was created when Earth was created? No. Was this a consciousness that they was created before Earth existed? And what is your role to just exist in the universe? But they sort of get to choose their role. And this collective consciousness chose to protect Earth. You know, they like Earth. We fascinate them. Um, and they feel that everything is working against us. Oh, here we go. Got it. Because I'm like, where is this going? Okay. This is a consciousness that is actually from the dark side. Now, the meteorite was sent to the earth plane from the universe in order to bring about life lessons for lots of us here on earth, right? And those, lots, those life lessons were going to be things such as, you know, you know, the universe loves to tell us how we're not in control. Look what look what's just happened, right? The big C word. Um, that, when I first probed that, it was like, well, hello, this is a wake-up call that you guys are not in control and you have to shift your con consciousness. So the universe decided that we need a life, we needed a life lesson and it was coming down. However, because there's always a war between light and dark, right? That exists on the earth plane. It exists within inside us and it definitely exists off the earth plane in space. Because at this point, this darkness, this dark energy does not want to, uh, the universe to win the light to win because in all we're supposed to, you know, well, if we realize that there's more on life than, you know, more to life than just the earth plane, what is that going to do? It's going to elevate people's consciousness and it's going to, um, you know, make us more religious, make us more respectful of source, you know, whenever these things happen. However, this collective, almost like alien life form, this collective group decided to interfere with that because they didn't want earth to experience this or us to experience this massive, uh, massive shift in consciousness. Right. So you really have to take off the 3d thinking here. Um, so, so, so you're saying actually that they prevented the disaster from be, be, to in order to keep us from raising our consciousness. So actually the meaning behind it was uh, malevolent. Yes. So the meaning behind it was actually to prevent us, because that's what the dark loves to do, right? The dark loves to prevent you from expanding your consciousness. That's why, and I've said this countless times before, that's why the dark is like, 
loves addictions. They love it when you get addicted to something because it stops you from, you know, expanding your consciousness. It stops you from expanding your spiritual path. You're trapped in the cycle of addiction. You're going nowhere when you're an addict. I don't care what you say. You're going nowhere. Whenever you're doing you know, drugs, you're going nowhere. If you get addicted to it, you're, you're going nowhere. If you're addicted to alcohol, you're stuck in that cycle, right? You cannot elevate your consciousness. You cannot grow on your spiritual path. And this life lesson that the universe was sending down to us. Yes, it would have been extremely destructive, extremely. So you're talking Miles and miles and miles and miles of destruction, death and destruction. And this thing prevented that. And it prevented it in such a way to stop us from raising our consciousness. So we look at the incident and we're like, oh, okay. Oh, well, we wow. didn't, look, you see what I mean? Yeah. So we didn't look at the incident and think, oh, my God, that was sent here. But, you know, the universe is so powerful. Oh, my God, we got to get on our knees and pray. We've got to do this. We've got to do that. Something out there is much bigger than we are. And we have to respect that. That's why the big C word came into existence, even though it was created as an idea in someone's head and then carried out in the LAB, right? And then it, you know, escaped and, and, and came to all of us, but it was to elevate our consciousness. And oftentimes our consciousness is elevated through very terrible things, right? That's why we have to suffer. That's why we have to experience so many bad things here because it's pushing us forward and it's processing and elevating our consciousness. Now, this thing that interfered with the meteorite, it that it prevented that because we just went on with our daily lives. Oh, okay, this happened. We cleaned up and okay, the people were directly affected that were there, but really the whole world didn't didn't really care. Um, it didn't impact the earth as much. So the world- no, we just got some great footage of uh, light flashes and uh, we went on with our lives, uh, basically, and most people uh, will have barely remembered the incident uh, after all these years. Um, wow, that's fascinating. And so what would uh, its interest be to, to stop consciousness from growing? What, uh, why is that good for him or, or it? So I'm learning so much. And um, because when we elevate our consciousness, we're sending energy back to source, right? Mm -hmm. And they don't want source to be powerful. They don't want the white light to be, you know, more powerful than they are. So they have to prevent that from happening. That's why people get trapped where they are all the time. And, and dark emotions will trap you there. You know, there's some extremely brilliant people on the planet that are addicts and if they just weren't addicted to substances they would have really made such a, a huge impact on the world in such a positive way but for the dark menace to trap them in that addiction mm -hmm. so this uh, entity you're uh, you're uh, tapped into right now can it give uh, one or two examples from other um, other disasters that it stopped from happening? Yes, there was an incident where a boat was sinking. It's it's as if they're over in that in that region of the world. There was an incident of a boat sinking over there somewhere large. It had a lot of people on board, and somehow miraculously. The boat did not sink. It's I can see it. It's tilting on its side and people are getting scared. And for some reason, it managed to stay afloat. And I can see them with the energy. They're they're holding the boat and they're pushing it sort of back over in the in, you know, back to to 
with the boat being as it should be, you know, balanced very fairly on the water and until they could get saved. So that would have been another disaster involving a few hundred people. So are there more of you um, doing your thing around the world? No, no, I feel like it's just this group. Okay. But, you know, as much as we appreciate them stopping that disaster or disasters, you also have to understand the intention. And the intention is everything. Yeah, sure. Would you, would you, would you stop a nuclear war from happening? Would you stop a nuclear war from happening? Absolutely. Um, and, and the meaning behind the question is there that uh, on the one hand, we would be, if a nuclear war happened, maybe it would raise consciousness. But on the other hand, uh, we would all be gone. So kind of, it would be kind of a, a, maybe a pointless exercise if we blow up the entire farm. So I can imagine personally that both may be uh, good and evil, dark and light forces want to stop that from happening. If you get my well, point. Yes, I do. I understand that. And I think somebody's asked me about that before. Would aliens prevent or some sort of energetic prevention of a nuclear disaster? And, and I, I never thought of it in this way, but they would definitely try to stop that. Mm -hmm. So are there others that uh, are... Uh... Are there may, maybe not others like you, this consciousness, but are there others like uh, maybe just uh, very uh, maybe alien races or other types of consciousness with the same uh, agenda, trying to stop consciousness from, from raising on this planet? Are there other types of groups? Yeah, there Are you there, Liz? Hello, Liz. I think Liz is taking a call with the Galactic Federation. She will uh, return in a bit, hopefully. Crisis call. Hey, Liz, are you there? Okay, I think I'm alone, and uh, I'm going to stop the recording, and hopefully uh, this will be edited out. So I'm going to reconnect. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, folks, we're back, uh, and uh, we had a little uh, glitch at a, at a very interesting time. Uh, so, Liz, what do you think happened? That happens to me frequently. Um, whenever we start doing something that, you know, the powers that be don't like or, you know, maybe whatever, uh, it happens frequently. The energy gets really too much in my workroom and it blew my electrics. Wow. Yeah, that happens a lot. It's like when I was shooting a video uh, last week and uh, Mr. Robot was doing too many searches on too many different topics and, and it the Google just went down. <laughs> oh, wow. 
So, so this happened. What was the energy? Uh, was it just like an overload, or was the energy actually trying to stop you from uh, putting out this information? What do you think? Um, let's see. Was this an energy overload? No, it was a. It was trying to stop. It was trying to prevent me. But uh, yeah, so it just went. Everything just went sort of in the room. And uh, it shut everything down. And then, of course, I had to wait until my electrics uh, came back up. But that's what happened. Sorry about that, folks. But that does happen. Because, like I said, when we're talking, everything is energy. And the first time I actually noticed that I could see and manipulate energy, it was, actually, it was at a very profound place. And just out of sheer, I, I, I'm not going to say luck, but we were very fortunate. We went to Israel and we were staying. Okay, guys, listen, don't think I'm posh, right? But I scored room, a room at the Waldorf Astoria in Jerusalem for $75 a night, <laughs> Right. It's normally like eight, nine hundred dollars a night. I got it for seventy five bucks a night, right? So we were we were living like you know royalty at the the Waldorf Astoria, and the reason that was was because I um, I worked for Hilton at the time. Just I did this little rubbish job for Hilton, just like four hours a week, just for the employee discounts, which are practically non existent now. So. I, we just so happened to say, you know, I, I was Googling and I was messing around. And I put in the discount code. I got the Waldorf Festoria for $75 a night in Jerusalem. My husband said, let's go. So we went. Now, uh, what we did is we had to take turns because, you know, the kids and everything. So I would get up very early at five in the morning and I would walk through the old city. And it was very deserted at five in the morning. There's nobody there. And I'm walking through the old city and I would go to the wall. And for those of you uh, who know what the wall is, uh, Christian terms, it's the wailing wall, um, but the wall. And, you know, there's a male side and a female side. And I would go down there and there'd be a handful of, of very religious Orthodox women down there. And I just would sit there and I would just watch people because I was fascinated by the wall. And as I'm sitting there, my legs started to vibrate, like buzz and vibrate. And then my whole body started to vibrate. And it was as if I was receiving an energetic charge from the wall. And suddenly I saw the wall just light up with energy. And it was at that moment I had a breakthrough and I was like, I can see energy now. And, and then I started looking at the energy and I was like, well, if this has energy, this has a consciousness. And that's, that was really a profound moment for me. That's, that's how I learned to work with energy. So I can understand these beings. And, and, and as a, a medium, I can, that's, that's when it sort of, it, it, it hit me. I was like manipulating energy. I was grouping it up in a ball. I was stretching it out. I was making shapes with it. I understand what they did with this meteorite. You can make energy like that. But it was very, it was just such an eye-opening event. And, and I, I had to leave the wall area because the buzzing throughout my body was becoming uncomfortable. I was like, oh my God, am I about to have a stroke? You know, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm seeing flashing lights because, uh, you know, something's going on with my brain. But no, that wasn't it at all. And then I went back down there again the next morning and the same thing happened. That's when so, I was enlightened to energy. Interesting. And, and, and but what was the energy of the wailing wall? Because uh, at the end of the day, a lot of people do uh, a lot of complaining there. So I can imagine uh, it's very, uh, maybe very negative. No, it was extremely positive. That's a good question. No, it was it was extremely positive because people are praying to the wall all the time. And I hmm. said, well, if this wall is holding energy, um, then churches would hold energy and other places of worship would hold energy because people are 
pouring their hearts out inside or outside of these places. So I left the wall one morning and I went to the church that has the tomb of Jesus Christ, allegedly. Um, and it was funny because there's no electricity in the, in the church. And so I sort of hid in this little corner of the church. I mean, I wasn't like hiding behind a pillar or anything, but I was standing there and I was standing near the tomb, but because there's no electricity and, and it wasn't full daylight yet, I was tucked away and people were coming in that had made these pilgrimages uh, from around the world and they were collapsing at the tomb of Jesus and they were just wailing and crying and they were just, they were so happy to be there. Right. That was also very moving for me. So the tomb of Jesus Christ, which is in, and I can never pronounce it. I'm so sorry. The church, right. I just call it the church because I can never pronounce it, which is in Jerusalem was extremely powerful with energy and, and that's because people were coming in and pouring their heart out at the tomb. They were just so happy. They had followed Jesus their entire life. And um, it, it just so happened that a group from Africa had made the, the trek all the way to the tomb. This was a, a, a tour and it probably cost them thousands. And I wouldn't say that they were extremely wealthy people. They were probably people that saved up their whole lives just to get to the tomb of Jesus. And, and so that's when I noticed all of these energy forms. And I was like, okay, this is, this is amazing. It really, you know, and that's how I understood that everything was energy and, and energy is, is we are energy, right? So even if the body dies, we're still energy, right? We still leave our soul is energy. Absolutely. And uh, it, it made me think of um, this big UFO sighting in uh, Jeruz Jerusalem, uh, um, which was like uh, filmed by three different people. And I, I just don't know if it was debunked or not, whether it was like a joke or um, uh, this was in 2016. I'm just Googling it uh, as we speak. Everybody should go to Jerusalem. I, I swear it is the most... Certainly for me, I was, I didn't know what to expect there, right? I'd never been to Israel. I'd never been to Jerusalem. I'm not a religious person, right? Because whenever I went to church or anything to do with any type of religion when I was younger, it always, my insides were like retreating. It was like, this is not right. This is, I can't stay here. And, but I am extremely spiritual, as you all know, but Jerusalem was just an amazing place. The energy, the vibrance in the city, the fact that there's so many religious people and the shawarma, of course, you have to go to Jerusalem for the shawarma and the hummus and the, and the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and the salads. And, and it's just amazing. And we were actually in Jerusalem almost the whole time apart from a little a day trip to Tel Aviv. But it was, it was just amazing. And you can feel the energy just flowing through the old city. And you, that's when I learned about energy. It was from that trip. And it was okay. We, our, our topic is like as completely uh, yeah. the 90 degree turn here, but that's fine. That's, that's, that's what we do. That's what we're all about. <laughs> but uh, so, uh, what, did the place have a holy energy because of all the praying of the people there throughout the, um, the centuries? Or was the, is the area, does it have an energy of itself? Uh, which is like, a, was, is it a historic, a holy place just because of the vibe there or the feng shui? Or did it become holy because of the, 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 the let's say, human activity, human consciousness? Oh, gosh, um, that is a really great question. Another great question. Well done. Um, is it, the... it would have been way better if I would actually have had a decent night of sleep. But uh, <laughs> no. it, it is what it is. <laughs> well, we've done this before. Your best videos are always when you don't sleep. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe that's right actually. 
There was a reason you didn't sleep last night. That darn mosquito has made this video. Um, it's, it's, I think it's residual. I think it's residual energy where people have, you know, put their energy into the whole city. So like the stone and the brickwork and it's almost like a release. And it's very, very positive. In fact, when we were walking around Jerusalem, you know, which is v prone to attacks and, you know, terror and whatever, when you're walking around it, it certainly doesn't feel that way. It feels very peaceful. It's a very family oriented place. And then suddenly in the back of your mind, you're like, but wait a minute, this is a big scene of contention here this is a big scene of of fighting here and you it was hard to keep that in the back of your mind given the atmosphere was so peaceful and we even took a long uh, a wrong turn into the um muslim area of jerusalem which they always tell you do not go down to the muslim area of jerusalem don't don't do it don't do it it's dangerous right and I didn't have any danger there. I, I'm pretty good at sensing danger. I didn't feel anything dangerous. And we kept taking wrong turns and we're all in the Muslim area of, and you know what, just, uh, you know, going back to our topic in just a second, whenever you get in a dangerous situation like that or in the world, you always talk about food. And I found that as a get out clause, right? I've been in some tricky situations in different countries around the world. And you always ask them to explain the food to you, right? So we stopped at this little Muslim cafe. And I was like, oh, look at all these sauces. Look at all these spices. Oh, my God. I, I love and I like to cook anyway. So you know, can you explain what's your recipe? Oh, my God, I want to try this and I want to try that. And instantly the barriers are down, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Instantly. Anyway, that's when <clears throat> I learned about, excuse me, that's when I learned about energy. And, and in those of you who were at the CTT session on Monday, we actually did a lot of work on our DNA and it was probably the most powerful CTT session we've ever done. Uh, but going back to this entity that I'm yeah. chanting, right? It, it's, it's working with energy. And that's what I find across the board with aliens, which is, I don't find them in bodies, certainly not in body form that we have, that they project themselves as holographic figures, just like a spirit would, mm -hmm. but so, in a different form. So, yeah. And so is the entity, is it uh, generally uh, happy? about um, our lack of progress or is it kind of unhappy because uh, consciousness is growing on the planet does it feel threatened somehow do you feel threatened yes it threatens it is the dark is always threatened by an expansion of consciousness always mm -hmm. because that expansion of consciousness makes you understand your existence more and when you understand your existence you then look at things in a more white light way when you look at things in a more white light way you're feeding that positive energy directly back up to source does the entity understand that it can only slow down the expansion of consciousness or does it think it can stop it altogether or even reverse it. Do you think that the, the expansion of consciousness can be stopped? It can only slow it down. You're exactly right. And what, what does the entity think its own future is in the long run? Well, because the entity would be completely, the dark would be completely wiped out if we had mass consciousness expansion it, it wipes out the dark right so if everybody went through this complete everybody on the planet went through this complete 
uh, enlightenment and expansion and elevated consciousness, the dark would not exist. And is that feasible, Liz? I'm asking you as a psychic or as a remote viewer, do you, do you see that moment uh, in, our, in our near future or far future? I don't see that at all. I don't see that. Um, I wish that I did, but I, I don't see that because we're too bogged down by everyday living. You know, I've yeah. got to have money to survive. So money can be white light energy, but it can also be very dark mm -hmm. because it invokes a lot of uh, different emotions around money. We're actually going to do a probe on money very soon and to, to find out like, how do we, how do we deal with money? Mm -hmm. You know, because when I'm looking at past lives, we didn't have to worry about money. We grew our own food. We lived near the water. Uh, we built our, you know, we cut down trees and we built our own homes. Uh, we didn't have to worry about money, but then money came in there somewhere and then it became this existence now, which is, yes, on some level made our lives much easier because we no longer have to do those survival things. So we, you know, our consciousness is going in a completely different direction. However, it's become a very dark thing as well because we have to have money. It's the scramble for money and, and we always want more and more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And so... You know, they said push pull, light dark, light dark, light dark. It's a constant war. That is a topic on its own for sure, not for today. Um, let's um, let's maybe wind uh, things uh, down with the entity. I'm wondering um, if. Um, you know, it prevented certain things from happening to raise consciousness on the planet. Did it also make things happen? Oh, okay. Have you ever made things happen? And if yes, can you, uh, is there an example or two that you can give? Well, this is what I'm getting, like sightings, and, you know, them showing themselves here. See, a lot of people ha are so pro-alien, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and I understand that. I do. And, of course, we want to know what's out there. And, of course, we, we want to, you know, talk to it and communicate with it. What's it like in space? We just want to know, no, 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 no. You know, we want to know everything about them. But the more they expose themselves to us here on the planet, the more relaxed we are. And then when we understand the amount of power and control that they have, you know, we understand that they're more powerful and we don't talk to them. But now that was in the past, but now it's like, oh yes, we're going to channel them. We're going to talk to them. We're going to do this and do that. And we're becoming too relaxed. But every time I look at these alien entities, they're seemingly very dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. That, that, that is really, that, that's a video uh, worth of, uh, its own video as well. Uh, yeah. I'll get a lot of hate mail for that. I usually, whenever I talk about this, um, I usually get hate mail. But yeah. I can only tell you what I see. And, and oftentimes I get asked, you know, are there good, are there bad, are there good, are there bad, you know, are they, are they all bad, are there any good ones, but I've tried to find the good ones, and right now, but have I channeled every alien entity out there? No, because there's billions and billions of them, right, but at the moment, as far as I can report, because that's my job, my job is to report to you, everybody, my findings, I haven't been able to find any good aliens yeah i can i can imagine that you get some hate mail from uh the, the fans of people like grant cameron and uh, <laughs> yeah. greer and uh um uh yeah i mean so wow that's uh well, you that, only that have is. sorry you only have to look at farsight you know there was a discussion on the discord about 
alien, you know, co compromising people. And you only have to look at how far sight now are. They have been so compromised. Courtney Brown, and it's no disrespect to Courtney Brown, okay, because I, I respect him as a remote viewer. But you can see now he has just been so compromised. And, and that's what they do. They sweet talk you. They want to tell you what, you know, what you want to hear um, in order to gain your confidence and that you interact with them all the time. And then it becomes the takeover of your mm -hmm. consciousness. And that is exactly what has happened to him. That's why, you know, luckily for me, I don't engage them. Uh, I felt... And for those of you that heard the video last week that I did with Mr. Robot, where I was channeling uh, this, this Kanit, whatever this alien was, he was trying everything to get me to engage him in more conversation. They want more and more and more and more because that gives them more power, right? And actually, I'll report to you that evening, uh, I had a lot of difficulty sleeping that night. I was constantly being poked and prodded by this alien. They just don't leave. Now, spirits from the white light or energetic entities from the white light, they respect your boundaries, right? So if you tell them to leave, they go. Mm -hmm. You know that darkness does not respect boundaries, even, even on the earth plane. Darkness does not respect boundaries, right? Yep. Dark, and so they disrespect you and, you know, they verbally abuse you, whatever. I'm, those of you will get my joke. But, you know, this thing just would not leave me alone. And, and that's how Courtney Brown has been compromised because now every single RV session he does leads back to alien existence. And, and what that does is everybody's like, oh, well, aliens... Uh, do control the world. Maybe they're so, and it starts convincing people to cross over to that side and then they end up compromised as well. Right. So you have to be extremely careful. Now that's my opinion and my findings. And I can only report to you my findings. If that changes, well then you'll follow me and, and through the years, we'll find out if there's a change in that belief. Liz, uh, do you also think that um, by uh, believing in aliens and uh, encouraging their uh, appearance, that we're also actually manifesting the phenomenon. Gosh, you're on fire today, Max, with your questions. Next time, remind me to call you in the middle of the night so you don't get any, <laughs> you don't get any sleep. So um, my way. Yeah. We actually, yes, we do. Yes, that's a clear yes. So we're manifesting them more and more and more, and we manifest them. So, so okay, with your introduction of the Galactic Federation, now there is a collective consciousness of energy that's called Galactic Federation, right? But that's a conscious mind construct that's made by humans. So we when can see it actually. That's fascinating. Yeah, when I go looking for Galactic Federation as in a race of aliens, I just don't see them as of yet. But I do see the collective consciousness that we as humans have created. But that, that is a positive consciousness, right? A, a positive construct, isn't it? Yes. So because we've created it collectively as human beings, as a conscious mind construct. Yes, we're looking at that very positive. It's kind of like, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Roswell, okay? When you're looking at Roswell, there's the incident that happened, but then if you group it all as an entity, right? Then there's everybody's thoughts, beliefs, um, those sorts of things that are in that collective consciousness. So mm -hmm. this is the biggest misconception that people have they think that their thoughts are private your thoughts are not private people okay that's really scary if your thoughts were private i wouldn't be able to do mind probes if your thoughts were private the universe would not run in the way that it does so every thought that you have is picked up by the universe and it's like a pigeonhole thing. You know, we're, 
we're putting this thought here and we're putting that thought there and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And, and when you're trying to manifest, it's the same thing. So if you're trying to manifest as a group, like we do with the CTT group on a Monday, we actually, you can feel the power of the group because we're all trying to manifest at the same time. We're also healing ourselves at the same time. And, uh, but all, you know, that, but thoughts are not private. Um, the consciousness that we, uh, I think we, let, let's try it because we've been uh, going at it for an hour. I think we need to, uh, I propose that we let the uh, our, our um, your fans on the Discord and on YouTube maybe decide where we take the conversation next time because uh, there's a lot of things that were said here that are uh, opening up new avenues for uh, more very interesting videos. I'm sure you will agree. Um, but maybe we can um, wrap things up with the entity. W was it? Did it voluntarily? Um, uh, relate the information to you without any issue? Yes. Yes. Why? Why do you think that is? Because they like to be heard. Because by doing that, it gives them a space. Listen, it's very rare that even when I'm doing a reading for somebody that their loved one comes down and doesn't want to show themselves or doesn't want to talk. They love having that space they love having that you know that i'm that still part. relevant mm. yeah interesting does it have any um anything to say to us maybe a few uh final words or a final uh statement it's gonna be something like don't grow don't grow <laughs> no it wants us to channel them again you see this is the takeover right because uh. As you're talking, it's trying to, to sweet talk me. It's trying to say, you know, you'll live forever. You're the most wonderful psychic medium in the whole wide world. We love you, Liz, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, yeah, okay, I'm going to engage you every day. And now I'm going to. And now I'm going to make videos with channeling just you and you only. And, and now we're going to give lots of good information out to the world. And then slowly, slowly, slowly over time, you compromise your me and the followers, right? Mm -hmm. I just don't fall for that. It's kind of like being back at the, the 999 dispatch, right? Where yeah. a known drug dealer calls you. And is very polite over the phone because somebody just burgled their house and it's stolen, stolen, stolen all their property. They're so, okay. You know, and you're being nice to me on the phone because you want the police round to help you. Okay. Mm. But last week, you know, you were dealing drugs <laughs> and you were shooting at people. And when the police turned up, you're like, you know, swearing and and fighting the officer it's the same thing it's the same thing it's it just so you know now because you want something from me right you're trying to oh you know this that and the other trying to really get me to engage but i know that you were the same call we took last week that we were shooting at people that you know tried to rip you off and they gave yeah. you a 10 pound note instead of a 20 pound note for the drugs that you were selling yeah 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 oh just on the uh, last note, do you know how many po <laughs> prostitutes call up who <laughs> say they've been ripped off to the police? It's it's funny. Anyway. Uh, no, tell me. <laughs> a lot. A lot. They okay. always call. They always call when, when somebody hasn't paid them for their full full price uh, for the services. They call all the time. I've been robbed. I've been robbed. And you know that Tatiana operating at a golders green is robbed at least three times a day <laughs> <laughs> okay. wow this uh this conversation really was all over the place in, in good ways in good ways from prostitution to alien entities to uh wow. well you, anyway, you Liz, are in uh, holland of course we got to throw in the odd prostitute yeah obviously yeah for sure <laughs> No, no good conversation without a prostitute joke thrown in there. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> so, uh, Liz, Liz, any um, uh, as I mentioned, I think uh, I think we need to wrap it up. We, we yeah, we're gonna we wrap this up. Yeah, so, we, we, 
Yeah, let, let's, let, let our audience maybe make suggestions on where they want us to take the conversation next, or maybe they think uh, we're good and do something else. Uh, so leave us a comment in the uh, under, underneath the video or uh, join us on uh, Discord. I, I pop in not very frequently, but at least once a week. And uh, I'll try to be there more. Uh, and, and Liz, any... Um, any um, final words from the Galactic Federation or a personal <laughs> statement? <laughs> Just you can find me at psychiclizcross.com or you can find all the action on the Patreon and the Discord that is attached to the Patreon, remote viewing and beyond. Thank you very much. I'm sorry this went all over the place, but I've got to put the information out there. There you go. Yeah, a lot to unpack there, as people nowadays uh, say. So. Uh, yeah, see you next time, folks. And, Thank uh, you. And uh, I hope you will enjoy the vid. Let us know. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Liz.